Hello, welcome to What Tough. I'm Gareth. You are Richard. And it's brought to you this week and every other week coming forward by Supreme CBD. So head over to supremecbd.uk and use the code WTAF and you get 40%, which is a pretty big discount to be fair, 40% off every single product at Britain's U- UK, wait a minute, at the UK's leading CBD provider. Boom. Done. Although was- you, did, you did say coming forward. Um, that was that was my corporate bit. It's not normal. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> that was all right. That Thanks, all right. mate. Yeah, how are well, you? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I've got my coffee. Yep, um, same here. In- I was building. I was building gym equipment. It says it takes four hours for two men, and I did it on my own in three and a half. I'll take that. Yeah, not bad. Um, and then I've got one more cable to put on, actually. So it probably will be about four hours. But. It got to about half 11 last night, and I was like, do you know what? Fuck this. Like, my shoulders were... Because I'm, like, tightening all these... I was like, my shoulders were just ruined. So I thought, I'll go upstairs, I'll chill out for half an hour, then I'll go to bed. And I end up rolling into bed at 2 a.m. What were you doing? To... Just just chilling. Like, I, I never get any chill, Rich, yeah, like, no. at all. I have to do that, like, between 10 and 12 at night. That's my kind of... Is that your two hours, is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, I get literally no chill. It's just it's work and kids and chatting shit with you, and that's my life. Basically, I do exactly the same as you do. You literally yeah. just described my life, but the other way around. Yeah, so I, I just thought you know, it was just really nice. Even Gemma said she was like, "We need to go to bed." To be fair, but um, it was just like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll, a bit. A bit it's two a.m. Fuck yeah, because I'm um, I'm in Law's room as well at the minute, right? Because oh, right, yeah. a, a Laura broke a collarbone um, over New Year's, which is great great fun um and so she's actually got a cabin bed so she's back in her bed but obviously because she's got a broken collarbone i'm the most paranoid dad in the world and the idea that she might get up in the night for a wee or something with one arm trying to climb down the stairs of a cabin Mm. bed no chance so i've got a little mattress on the floor i did the same last night in arthur's got a mattress under his because he's in a bed bed now he's not in the cot so um i think it's riveting for the listeners um, and I sleep on a mattress on the floor. Leave your comments. <laughs> Let's crack on with the what ifs. I don't know. That was quite nice. We were going to do a podcast called um, Knackered about the, being a dad. So the, we, knackers, the Knackers Yard was the plan, wasn't it? Yeah, if you like I'd, that, that I'd stuff. I'd still like to do that. Just, I, just me and you for an hour a week going, fucking Knackers. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Sunday nights. Sunday night Knackers. Brought yeah. to you with Supreme CBD. Oh, guys, you go over to YouTube and type what ifs in. We have a YouTube channel now, which we will be doing some lives on as well. So we'll be doing some extra live stuff. And we have a gig coming up, don't we? We do, yes. It's crazy. We're, we're in um, in Leicestershire um, as part of a, uh, a comedy podcast weekend with some really cool names, people like Abby Roberts and Alistair Williams. And um, Dick Delenpole is hosting it. It looks really, really cool. And we were asked to do a WhatsApp Live, which is great because there's no fucking work needed. We just... <laughs> You'd have to, like, so these comedians, right, they've obviously got to, you know, write their content. I'm guessing they might do a couple of warm-up gigs, right, with some select people. Me and you go, have you got any what Yeah. Done. Yeah, what's this? And then the, the only kind of bit is, can we see it on a screen? It would make it a bit better. That's as high-tech as we get. Yeah. I, that was the funny thing when, when the tech guy contacted me. What do you need? Uh, two mics. <coughs> couple of stools. Couple of, somewhere, somewhere to sit. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Isn't it? Guy arrived at work here in the in Derby. Right? I arrived about I don't know 15 minutes ago, right? And I literally went onto my own Twitter, and I've got seven what ifs. Have you? Okay, that let's. Was, that was let, my research. Let's crack it. Even this is the, the the beauty of it. It writes itself, and that's the beauty of it. Oh wow! Oh, that was that was wonderful. I could, I could make a meme out of that. A lot of people pay for that. I'm gonna have to test myself on it. Gagging Ike. Go on. Then. Yeah, that's the sound I make as I'm being put into a duffel bag. <laughs> um, right. Okay, so first one. Right, with it, I've got two anti-Semitism stories because anti-Semitism's back. It's never that far away, is it, to be fair? Nope. Until someone's accused of it. Um, the second story is about Andrew Brigden MP, mm-hmm. which is just insane, but obviously we'll get onto that. This one, right, now I'm not a fan of uh, Le- the Labour Party. You might be surprised to hear, Right. But I'm also not a fan of of uh, liars, um, and so the idea that uh, Jeremy Corbyn was an anti-Semite was just laughable. It yeah. was just ridiculous, and it was blatantly done one to um, make sure he didn't become PM, and also um, to get insincere Starmer as leader of the Labour Party. Right. Well, now that's all done, 
and um, Corbyn's kicked out of the party. They don't really care what comes out. So this is about the BBC, this story, because, you know, we love the BBC. They're so fucking trustworthy. Um, they've got a disinformation department, Richard, so they must be trustworthy. I love that they call it a department when it's one young 22-year-old girl in a broom cupboard, like Philip Schofield. Yeah, exactly. Um, only she's the puppet, a hand up her ass. Um, Just a hand. Right. So this this is part that made it into the panorama documentary on Labour anti-Semitism. Evil, 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 evil. Um, right, so... She is the BBC. Blah, 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 blah. Um, they did an interview with uh, Izzy Lenger, um, who is a um, a young Jewish uh, girl um, activist. Um, and when she was a student activist, she received a lot of anti-Semitism, apparently. Okay, so they've interviewed her. Now, this was the interview because obviously it's a talking head. Because they love a talking head, um, and it's like you know spliced together with a bit of stock footage, probably. But here's um here's what they put in Panorama. Okay. Mm. I'm Izzy Lenger. I joined the Labour Party in 2015. The anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic abuse I received was what I was subjected, subjected to every single day, telling me Hitler was right, telling me Hitler didn't go far enough. Who said that? Right, OK, so that's what... That's, what... that's just... <laughs> Who says right. that? Was well, she they... queuing up for her sandwiches? Oh, and she was like... He didn't go far enough. Oh, <laughs> oh God, I hope there's some anthrax in that sandwich. That's the thing, isn't it? So let me read that again, but without all the stuttering that I did. I'm Izzy Lenger. I joined the Labour Party in 2015. The anti-Semitic abuse I received was what I was subjected to every single day, telling me Hitler was right, telling me Hitler didn't go far enough. OK, right? It's just that's what, bollocks. That's, that's yeah. what made it into the show, right? This is what she actually said. Right, OK. Yeah, so they've cut bits out. To, to f- yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Izzy Lenga. I joined the Labour Party in 2015. When I was a student, being quite a high-profile Jewish women's, woman student, I was subjected to quite a lot of nasty vitriol and abuse. The anti-Semitic abuse I received was what I was subjected to every day. Predictably, a lot of it came from the far-right neo-Nazi abuse, telling me Hitler was right, telling me Hitler didn't go far enough. So you've, you've got out the bit, you've got <laughs> the specific... I mean, the specific... Like group that it was coming from that was kind of that wasn't Labour. That wasn't Labour. <laughs> they cut that out. Now, wow. Do you know what I mean? And 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 this is the the trustworthy news source that everyone's you know taking all their COVID advice and all their you know um, Ukraine uh, climate change, all this sort of stuff is coming from that same news outlet, which lies. Not just lies. Like there's they purposely push you in a certain direction to gaslight you continuously they yeah. manipulate you and abuse you as a listener they, abuse well, they, lie, you. they lie by omission and, they've, and we've spoke about that a bunch of times before because they've not made up anything she said they've just taken out crucial points so it's like just don't look at that yeah and but it changes the context of it completely changes it yeah if you if any changes. sentence if you take a couple of words out i could murder a cup of no, I'm not. I'm not sure where I'm going with this. No, but I, you, I get your point, though. Yeah, bit of a weird analogy. <laughs> but I, I get where you're going with it. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah. and also, I'm thinking, Izzy, like, what, what is she thinking? Yeah. Like, because if it's me and I do a few sort of, you know, sound bites or whatever, and then I sit down, oh, I'm on telly, I'm on BBC, way, get all the grandparents around, quick, record it, and then I said, that's not what I said. No, they've cut that out. When they, That's not what I said. They cut away to that random shot of a pillar box and cut back. They cut some words out there. It's, Which changes the whole thing. That's the BBC, it's, though. Scum. Yeah. Uh, uh, subhuman scum. Yeah, but the fact that what's even worse is they use it to do exactly what they're telling you that you're accused of doing. So they're actually using the Holocaust and using these things to promote their own message. So they're doing what they're accusing others of doing themselves. Isn't you, that always the way, though? Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Accuse others of doing what you're actually doing, which is always the way. And the other one was this um, Andrew. What's his name? Brigden. MP. Brigden. Yeah, yeah. Extraordinary. So he, he's he's following ONS data, which is showing that people are dying a lot, very suddenly. Quickly, yeah. All in, all very, of a sudden. Yeah, you know the the karmic forces. Um, not, not on, you know, June and Dave from down the corner shop. I, I, I have nothing but love for them. They were terrified, and I feel for them. But, you know, the, those that actively, like the American football player in America that called for us to all be arrested and shunned and kicked out of society, 
karmic forces, mate. Mm. It, 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 you're not having a good time of it at the moment. I, I literally see it every day. Every single day, there's an image of what they said, and then there's a obituary. What they said, obituary. It's every single day now, Rich. And I'm not celebrating it because that's a very low vibrational place to be where you're celebrating death. But, you know, karma is a fucking bitch. But it bears pointing out, doesn't it? It bears highlighting of course it does it saves yeah. other people from having to go through that themselves but some, well, that's the thing but then for the there's a prat that came out this morning on twitter was uh, berating him from talk no from the times um which would make me even uh, utter prat um what was his name so his name is um bear with me i will cut this bit out or cut away to a pillar box shot and then cut some words out and come back again um his name is um, Matt Chorley, Chorley, right. F- Chorley FM. Matt Chorley's got Come fire in your ears. Matt, Chor- <laughs> Matt Chorley be dead in a year. He will. Um, Andrew Brigden simply went from ONS data and he quoted high-profile doctors and one of those high-profile doctors said that this is insane, like this is a mass cull. This is probably like the biggest cull since the Holocaust. So this is Matt Chorley was the, the Times guy, but Andrew... MP Andrew Percy is having a go at Bridgeton about it. This MP clearly knows nothing about anything that he's talking about. What Andrew Bridgeton has said on this is utter rubbish. It's total nonsense. Anybody with half a brain cell who understands, um, you know, any um, uh, basic understanding of science uh, and of how these processes operate know that it's nonsense. So, uh, you know, I don't know how he's ended up in this position, but it's dangerous. And, you know, no member of my party should be pushing this crap. Percy Pick. Uh, Percy, yeah, no, that's MP Percy Pig, and he's, he clearly doesn't know a thing about what he's he's talking about. But that was on the Times radio, so they're all going at. Ant- but how they tie anti-Semitic in this is is hilarious. But well, this them- is the thing I, I've asked a couple of times. What tell me where the anti-Semitism then? Right. And even like Avi Yemeni from Rebel News, who's, who's a Jewish guy, massive Israel firster, he went through a big phase of calling everyone anti-Semitic. Um, although I've agreed with him massively over the last three years, you know, we, we wouldn't necessarily agree on a, the Middle East, for instance. Yeah. Even he replied to Matt Hancock saying, it's not anti Semitic. What's he said? What's he said? He's literally quoted someone mm. who said this is the biggest cull since the Holocaust. No one's yeah. denying the Holocaust happened. No one's downplaying it. No, no one's saying, you know, Andrew Brigden's not saying fucking. Israel are killing everyone with the vaccine. He's not said any of these things that you could then twist and say, you know, the, the, he's just saying, like, he's quoting someone. Yeah, it's, it's insane. These people are absolutely pathetic as well and desperate. It's so, and all, but what it does, Rich, is we're just having the conversation in the, in the office, um, me and, and Tom and, and Lewis Brackpool and stuff. It's like, if everything's anti-Semitic, nothing's, nothing is. No. So, so if, if, if Andrew Brigden is an, anti-Semitic for these comments... Then, then he is the same as someone saying, you know, so someone spray painting gas the Jews on, 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 a, on a college dorm room of a, of a, of a Jewish student. Hmm. If they're both anti-Semitic, then you, you're actually belittling this one. Well, of course you are. Again, you're doing the reverse of what you're saying that you're doing. It's always the inversion. But, and then there's, the, as we keep we mention in this podcast, well, I do a lot, is that, that Semite is mostly Arabic languages and Judaism is a faith. And I, I just can't get it where people don't understand that Judaism is a faith. It's not a place you come from in the Middle East. It's also, why, why can't you mention the Holocaust? You're not saying it in a derogatory way or, 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 or anything. You, you're just, it, why can't you mention that word? What is it about that word that is like, that's anti-Semitic? Because <laughs> they've got nothing else to work with. That's like their card just before the fake alien invasion, isn't it? Your anti semitic But what, 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 what if it's on? I don't know. What if it's a, a, on a game show and it's a word? And you've got to guess, and you say, um, "Can I? I'll have a H." All right. Other, yeah, H. Yeah, H comes up. Was it Wheel of Fortune? Yeah. Um, I'll have an O. And you're thinking to yourself, "You." Uh... It looks like it looks like Holocaust, <laughs> but I can't say it because if I say it, like. A lot. Maybe one of the lighting rigs will come down. <laughs> so you just go, um, um, ha- ha- happy, um, happy Mrs. Rabbit. Yeah. No. That's not oh. even close. Bit bit. Hol hologram. Oh, no, because there's a U in it. Um, Honolulu. Ho- Honolulu, Hawaii. No. No. I got. No. The, the, the round is is. Horrific events in history. What's Honolulu got? I don't know. They stole it from the natives. No, it's the wrong answer. What does Mr. Chip say? Wrong. It's a completely the wrong. wrong... Right. 
What's Chips doing? What's Chips, Chips doing? doing? Do you remember seeing the guy he, he, on his first day of doing it after he took over um, catchphrase? He fell down the stairs and broke his leg. Like, it was incredible. I have to send you the, the video. What's like, Chips doing? He, he was, you know, at the start, they come out and the, the, um, the presenter go, hey, hey, hey. Well, he, he went to go he downstairs. downstairs he like didn't. That. He went right down over his head and broke his leg. It was well, that's horrific. What happens, that's what happens when you when you sack the original guy, isn't it? Yeah. What did he get sacked for? No idea. Was he anti-Semitic? Was he? Probably. It was. It was an anti-Semitic suit. It was a shiny grey <laughs> suit. You know yeah. what's funny is when you said, I, I say this on on like most weeks. I was just all I could hear was Tower of Babel. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that, because that gets in every what of that. Yeah, it is. I will do later. I'll bring that in, and then we can do that. I even think I said it to Jay accidentally in a meeting, like, last week. Um, in other news, trans woman's bank account was frozen because she sounded like a man on the phone. Don't laugh, Kev. But this is... I mean, that's got to be annoying. But is that not part of the course? Well, it's in the Hornet. Um... This is a newspaper, apparently. Apparently, it is, yeah. But um, like that's I, I, it's not something I would have thought of. It made me giggle. It's like, like well, of course, yeah, I suppose so. Well, you but sound like a. But, but I get oh, they will sound like a man. I'm, I'm assuming it's a male to female trans, then. Yes. Yeah, so they will sound a bit like a man. Well, and I'm assuming it is as well. To be fair. If you're um, I've wait, got a picture. No, wait, if it was the other way around, wouldn't it? But <laughs> the the guy on the phone he is obviously doing his job and his due diligence which is to stop credit card fraud can't say due diligence it's oh. anti-semitic oh. um and so i mean if you come on now and you phone me and i go hello santander because that's how they answer the phone hello santander gareth speaking and you go um hi yeah um my name is uh, richard willett i think well no it's joe pasquale actually or <laughs> Well, that's a female, and Richard Willett is a male, so I think you might be committing fraud. Yeah. It's, just, it's annoying, but I doubt it's worth going to the newspapers with, is it? Well, it is in this case, so that, that, that one made me laugh. Clearly, it's a man to woman, um, and I think that is a Santander as well, which was a good guess. Would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it would. Yeah, so... it, makes me, it makes me think of when we used to buy cigarettes as a kid, like going to this little kiosk, and they must have known, of course they knew. One day, I think I went in a school uniform. <laughs> <laughs> right, you stand on, on tiptoes and you go, 20 million ice cream, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even talk that deep now. No, you don't. Know, I'll have a pint, uh, can I have a pint of Guinness? and a, You always buy one you don't really want. Can I have a pint of Guinness and a Carlin and a packet of peanuts? You have to have food with it. A always. packet of peanuts, mate. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Cheers. And then you kind of look around. Everyone's looking at you. All the old guys at the bar going, I remember. Just, I remember just, some. Yeah, just, just a beer you've heard of. You're only four stalls up up the bar to get to where I, I am, a, mate. Can I have a Carling Black Label, please? I don't think they've done that since about 1988. Oh. I'll have a packet of Guinness. A uh, packet of Monster Munch, a Freddo, and a four pack of uh, Tisky, please. And if you've got a chance, can you get your 50p's for the pool table, please? Oh. Yay! Oh, yeah, putting that on. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, all right. You don't talk like that. I do, because I do, I'm with working class men that are older than me. Yeah, so say with you, the dreamer people go, the white blood, come up, check yeah. the white blood. You don't white talk like that it. around your mum and dad. All right, son. Like, going, oh, like, you need, well, you don't yeah. talk like that in hey, front dad. of your parents. Yeah. Do you want a spot? Do you want a spot, son? Son? You're about son. 20 years older than you. <laughs> I call people that just for a laugh. Um, yeah, so that was my one, my first one. Trans woman got her, her, him, hers, a bank account frozen because it sounded like a man. But yeah, it's annoying. But I guess that's part of it. I don't know, that's gonna happen, Security, because you can't really do the guy for like being bigoted or phobic because it's on the phone. It's like it's not like he can see you and go, oh, I can see an Adam's apple, but they've also got lipstick and a beret on, so it's definitely a woman. You just go, still, you know, it's still sort of fun. Still confusing. Talking to trans women though, yeah. um, Zelensky at the Golden Globes, in it. Yeah, you go because well, I haven't seen all I of just, this. Uh, like, I'll just repeat what I said two weeks ago. I fucking hate him. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of the 80s Golden Globe Award ceremony. The award was won at a special time. The Second World War wasn't over yet, but the tide was turned. All knew who would win. <laughs> I can't bear him. Just his face. I hate him. 
So what was he, he doing it there then? I, expe- what, he was accepting awards for the most overpaid fucking actor in Hollywood. <laughs> so, but short, was it Sean Penn again? Yeah. Sean Penn was there. Um, he he goes to the same school of manufactured scruffiness as Boris Johnson. Yeah, he's there. Just put a comb through your hair, mate. Like, no, no, no. It means I'm a rebel. It, it doesn't. It means you're a dick. He's an absolute dick. Do you think he believes everything oh, he's yeah. saying, Sean Penn? Um, I mean, is he that stupid? No, I think he's just one of the cult, isn't he? Yeah, I, I've he's just, he's, he's just. I think he's one of the club. He's got to be. He's got to be in the club. I wonder what he's done then. Um, made a couple of good films. And chatted a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, and fuck Madonna. Oh, did he fuck Madonna? Yeah. Oh, did I mean, he that was, get? That did was he... quite. That was quite a sort of like chauvinistic way of saying it, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry, everyone at home. He made love to Madonna. Yeah, he did with his um, penis. And didn't he get married to Lisa Marie Presley for like a week? Did he? I think he did. Could be wrong. Him and Michael Jackson. Well, not together. They weren't all in the same room. <laughs> What a um, what a lineup that is for Lisa Marie Presley. Who's your dad? Elvis. I mean, that's pretty fucking mental. Yeah, it's amazing. Can you reel off some husbands? Sean Penn, uh, Michael Jack, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. What do you? Michael do you Jackson. Mean? Yeah. Which one came first? Michael. I think she's been married quite a few times. It reminds me of a joke, right? Um, from when I was a kid. Uh, even though I'm with you a bit on Michael Jackson, I think there's a hell of a lot more to know. Oh, a lot, yeah. But the joke was. Um, Lisa Marie Presley sat there, they're, they're cuddling up on the sofa, and um, she goes, "Should we get a film? Should we get a, should we, should, should we watch a film and stuff tonight?" And um, he goes, "Yeah, we could get Aladdin." She goes, "No, no, we'll just watch a film tonight." <laughs> it's old. It's old. It's old. But most paedophile drinks are. Well, um, no, the, what makes me laugh every time I think of Aladdin? I think of um, when people went onto the streets of America. Um, around about sort of 2002, 2003 time when America was just fucking the Middle East to shreds. And they were asking people if they thought that the Americans should invade Agrabah. And I think it was like 80% of people just went, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is that a little like wine bar just off the seafront? No, it's a fictional place in Aladdin, isn't it? Is it? It's not even a real place. <laughs> and, 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 and loads of people. It'll be on YouTube if you search that. You'll be able to find uh, American thinking Amazing. that you should definitely invade Agrabah. Amazing. Let's do a transgender one again. Why not? Let's get them all out of the way. Transgender man, 30, confused already, is fined 200 quid for dipping prosthetic penis into pub goer's pint glasses in a drunken prank and smashing a fruit machine in a rage when he was asked to leave. Boys, even... boys will be boys, Rich, mate. <laughs> Lads, sort of. Lads. Transgender man, so woman, 30 is fined 200 quid for dipping prosthetic penis in pub go i mean why do you bring it along with you i don't understand why they had it it. it's 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 extraordinary it's i mean it's it's an extraordinary story on lots of different levels i would love to have been there personally so would i because i want to i want to know how it went from you know i mean you have a drop pint to can you can you get me another one he's put his cock in it that, what happened in between those two things? Yeah. That led, I mean, were they going... What's the build-up? Oh, and he went, I'm a bloke. And they went, you look like a woman. Can a woman do this? I mean, I... I Can a man do this? Can he that, just attach that, his penis and put it in your pint? I've never put my pint... Uh, my pint? I've never put my cock in a pint glass, I have to say. That's something I've not done. No, I, I haven't either, but, I mean, give it time. But well, yeah, they've never so, gone on like a rep. When, you've, when no one's taken him seriously, he's gone, honestly, he should be annoyed at this. And then he's got really angry, full of testosterone, and smashed up the fruit machine. I'll show you. I'm thinking, what's the fruit machine done? I don't know. Maybe he didn't stick put it, his cock in the fruit machine. Or stick it in the slot. <laughs> he's, um, the, I, you know, the fruit machine is the innocent party in all of this. I feel like I've been been harassed. Jesse, so his name's... I love it when they don't quite change their name to a full, like, male name. Jesse Hawthorne caused distress to customers sitting in a pub, a court herd. <laughs> what do you know what I mean? Sitting in a... You into the pubs that I've been. That's nothing. That's a I Sunday morning. Say, I was going to say, that would not... My experience of pubs, that would not be considered a distressing event. That would just be the entertainment for, like, one act. Going to, yeah, just a, like an on stage now. I would love, that sounds like a great laugh to me. 
Um, I've, I've walked in before into like a pool room in the Solent when I used to drink in the Solent and just walked in and gone, all right, Gray, it was the landlord. And he had his ha- he had his foot on the head of a customer. And you just go, I'll, 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 I'll wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he had previous, previous convictions. He had previous convictions for attacking the new boyfriend of his ex-partner. Can you get your head around that? So it's so a the, woman so... who's pretending to be a man had... So the partner, I guess, then is... No, I don't get it. Well, well, bisexual maybe then. Oh, wait a minute. That's but that's fine. Like you, 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 I've tried it with a trans guy. Didn't really work out. Kept putting his cock in my pint glass. So there's a clip. I'll, I'll, I'll try a, a a biological male for a bit, and then he does it. Fucking hell. She stopped carrying a pint glass around with me. That's the thing, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing. Start. Get, have a glass of wine. <laughs> he is more ladylike. He has been ordered to pay a fine of two hundred pound fine and four hundred in compensation to the pub. What do they? they what they got their doors shut like their windows drawn new, again? New I, can't, I can't. Oh yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it's true. Can't use it after that. It's got sperm all over it. Right, go on. The next one. That was all of our trans news out of the way. Um, I think. Yeah, no, that was all. Yeah. Um, okay, let's let's. I'm going to skip a couple because this made me laugh. Right, so a model, right, which that term doesn't really mean anything, does it, model? Because I see people call themselves models all the time, and it's like, well, what have you done? What, uh, what are my, you? Well, my, my weird uncle took some photos of me in my pants. Oh, you're a fucking model then. Stick <laughs> photos on Facebook. Do you mean you're uh, a coat hanger? May as well be, yeah. Or, or a, a fucking AFX plane. <laughs> Just sat there like that. Don't move. So anyway, model um, slams horse ranch. Oh, slams again. People love I hate this word. Every all of these, ju- I think these are written by bots. These headlines because they keep well, putting slams in there. Almost certainly, yeah. um, she's a big girl, so she's turned up at the horse ranch and gone right. I'll I'll, I'll have that one. I'll have a bit of a, a ride around on that. That looks like fun. <laughs> um, and the horse ranch owner's gone. Not a fucking chance, love. You break its back, <laughs> right? So break she's back mounting. So she's, she's she broke the back mounting. <laughs> So, so yeah. So they basically said, "I'm sorry, we can't have you on these horses because there is a, a weight limit." Which <laughs> that's amazing. I which is it's too that's fat for a horse. Too fat for a horse. Which is good I because I've just been slimming down. Yeah, you got to put you on our too fat for the horse program. It's not fair on the fucking horse to have some someone climbing on its back anyway. The horse just wants to sit and like chill out, play with a medicine ball. But um, have you seen that video actually? With Maybe the, with you the thought horse? she was a medicine ball. There's a horse jumping, not a medicine ball, sorry, a Swiss ball. You know, like one of the big inflatable ones. It's playing with it and it trips over it and polax it. It's quite funny, um, as long as it doesn't hurt itself. Um, but anyway, yeah, so so she slammed the horse ranch. She's gone She's gone public. She's claiming discrimination. I, I don't have a problem with it. I think, you know, I don't have a problem with all discrimination. If you're too fat and you're going to damage the horse, you should be discriminated against. But is that the just, that's fine. But that's just a practical thing. You're too fat for the horse to carry. Is it... Are you discriminate? If I come along with my little tow truck and I'm trying to like, oh, turn up here and it's a fucking HGV lorry and I, I can't get that on on here, mate, because this is only like a a, a VW. Um, discrimination. Discrimination. You got to get back. I mean, you know, it's too big for the for the truck. You are too big for this truck. Maybe I say they should have put it. But people people discriminate every day as well, and like not like I said, not all discrimination is bad. That's the clip, right? <laughs> Because you would discriminate discriminate against other women when you chose Sam. Because you don't want them, because you don't fancy them for whatever reason. You, I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> and that's actually how it was. Yeah, <laughs> just in a lineup. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we, we're 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 seeing if you recognise the burglar. Oh. Oh. Oh, I thought I got to pick one. Oh, all right. Well, I, I mean, I'm lucky you told me because I nearly slept with him. He yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah. Give me that pint glass. Um, but but yeah, so they've discriminated against her for a, for a good reason. You're going to damage the horse. So obviously, <laughs> just fat. either lose some weight or find a bigger horse. But then you, who goes home and goes, I'm going to the papers with this. But don't doesn't don't internalise it and go. It's a bit embarrassing. Too fat for the horse. I might want to. I don't really want anyone to know about this. That would be my reaction. <laughs> that would be my reaction. How was horse riding? <laughs> They're fully booked. <laughs> That's what you're doing, it. Yeah, we you're went, we go. went, oh, fun. they just, they invite me back next week. We're going to show jumping. Yeah, yeah, no, they, um, <clears throat> um, I'll turn up at the wrong place. It was, um, it was monster trucks. 
They wouldn't let me in. I was too thin. I was too thin. I would have fallen out. Yeah, exactly. They, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so but no, she didn't do that. She went to the press, obviously, and the photo. She's there in in um in a bikini top. Oh really? Well, we all wear bikini tops. We is it a bikini top or is it just a really small cardigan? Um, to be fair, it could be a fucking blanket or a t-shirt. I don't know. But um, but yeah. So that that kind of made me chuckle a bit, but it was also that kind of, why would you go public on that? I They're don't not, understand. I don't, the ranch is looking out for the welfare of the animal. That's a good thing. You would hope so, wouldn't you? You would hope yeah. so. Oh, oh, Greta Thunberg's got a statue. Have you seen this? Oh, God, yeah, Winchester University. Yep, Greta Thunberg's statue costing... How much do you think it cost? Too much. I, I think it was around about... Uh, um, uh, a year's worth of debt for a student, wasn't it? It was about thirty k. It was twenty four thousand pounds for a gold statue. Well, no, is it bronze? I don't know. Um, I'm not a an expert. Greta Thunberg in anything. Greta Thunberg statue costing staggering twenty four thousand at university sparks outrage. Isn't she pointing? Uh, she is pointing. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. If you twisted the arm round, she'd be sing Haley. Sick, 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 and even woke students. So even the woke students were annoyed at this. So... Well, it's, bull- it's bullshit for a start. But Winchester University's got form, hasn't it? Because do you remember uh, maybe two or three years ago? Basically, no one is performing as badly as white boys in uh, university or in um, college or school. No one's dropping out more than white boys, right? They're 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 struggling. White girls aren't doing great either. Why why the white, but, that sounds like a boy band. Why are white boys struggling? Um well that's the million dollar question. Why are they? Um but they are the the most failing demographic. Um uh, people can have questions about that. Well is it a cultural thing? Is it also the fact that they're told they're um, a waste of space and uh, toxic and misogynistic and useless and oppressors and privileged their whole fucking lives and not given any support. That might be part of it. Um, but but white boys and um, black boys are generally the two worst performing, right? So this guy, who's got a few quid, bear in mind there are um, different, um, you know, programs and stuff for every other demographic, So you can have, you know, I could go to the Winchester University, for instance, and say, look, I would like to give a million quid and start off a um, a uh, an organization within your university for Asian girls. And they go, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Give us your money. Is that how much they cost? Oh, God knows. (laughs) Maybe. But give us your money. Give us your money. Yeah, fine. And we'll we'll do that. And we'll, we'll set up scholarships and stuff. X, Y and Z. Right. That's fine. You can get a scholarship for every other demographic apart from a white male. So this guy went to a series of universities with a fuckload of money and said, I'd like to um, start and fund a, um, you know, a something within your university that these underperforming white boys from um, working class backgrounds can have scholarships and get access to high level education, which they don't get at the moment. Mm -hmm. And they refused it. The well, same you, unit, you, the one that's so, just yeah, spaffed well, twenty four thousand pound on a statue of a child. Well, there you go. Well, there's about four or five different universities across um, England that refuse the money because of who it was for. Um, and I am hundred percent sure. I'm going to Google it so I don't lie to our viewers. Um, that Winchester University was one of those universities that refused the grant. Um, so they refused it. So they they turned the money away. Yeah, because of of who well, it was for. Would well, you just take it and go? Yeah, we're not spending it on them. We're going to build a new calf. And we're going to put a Greta Thunberg fucking statue yes. in it. Private schools reject one million pound scholarship gift for disadvantaged white um, boys. Let's have a look at that. That's within iNews. Um, yeah, Dulwich, Dulwich College and Winchester College. So, OK, not Winchester University, Winchester College. Then I apologise. Um, turned down gifts amounting to one point two million um, over fears of breaching anti-discrimination laws. That's despite, as I mentioned, having scholarships for every other demographic. That's another inversion. Do what exactly what you're doing and accuse other people of doing it. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So now they've got twenty-four thousand pound left at the university, uh, less even, because they've got a bronze statue of Greta Thunberg um, standing right in front of a social distancing sign, which made me laugh even more. That's yeah. why she's pointing. That's you she's stand pointing. over there. You stand over there, not near me. How dare you! Yeah, how dare you, unless you're Biden. Stand right behind me and sniff. Right, I, want, of... I want her to say, oh, how dare you, in the same way as like Street Fighter said, Hadouken. Yeah, that how would be good. You? That would be good to have Street Fighter, but with Greta Thunberg and all of these politicians in it. 
Make, make it happen. Right, so where are we now then? Greta Thunberg, any more? Uh, yeah, no hugging. All relationships, please. What do you uh, mean? An Essex school, secondary school, has banned hugging because the hugging's bad. Between even... the students? You don't yeah, mean between, between random student... strangers and the yeah, children? No, no, the janitor is still allowed to hug kids in the cubicles. That's fine. That's fine. Um, but no hugging um, or relationships. It's not Rona related. I thought it was going to be weird Rona related that you can't, like, you know, right, two, okay. two metres, please. Science. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's um, so, yeah, we don't want any relationships between students. And you're like... What do you mean? They're children. One, one it's none of your business, miss. Like, who I date. Because it's secondary school. We had relationships in secondary school. It's no, how you didn't. I, but, I mean, well, you would chase well, me around did. all we did. the time. We did. didn't know about it. Right. Um, I identified as having a relationship with you, so fuck off. Oh, right? that's true. I've, yeah, that doesn't make sense now. It's but, coming back. But that's how you learn. Like, that's how you, you, you talk to girls or you talk to boys for the first time and you learn and you, you fuck up, you make mistakes, you sound like a div. Um, and you go, oh, my God, how embarrassing. Oh, I can't believe well, I called that... her a slag. I know, fuck. I fancied can't, her. Can't, can't believe I flicked her in the forehead. Yeah, I tripped her up. Oh, she hated that. She rolled right underneath that Mini Cooper. Yeah. And now, I mean, I don't even fancy her now she can't walk. No, a Mini, mini Cooper's the janitor. <laughs> He's not a big lad. No. But, but yeah, so that band. And, and you just think to yourself, but one, why? And two, fuck off. It's yes. none of your business. Right? How do you police that? Just teach me the capital of Brazil, please. Like, I don't, Brasilia. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not important stuff that, that you need to get involved in. Let, no. I'll have a relationship if I want to have one. That's not the school's business, thanks. It's the parents and mine. See you later. But I don't understand how they police that anyway. Well, the hugging. Okay, get off her. Stop it. What about they all get together? Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to date, right? We, we started dating, right? Yeah. And Sounds if anyone good. comes over, just say you're choking and I'm doing the Heimlich. <laughs> Fine. Can Why you, you stop ch- hugging her? <clears throat> oh, you've saved her life. Why oh, are your trousers I down? Why is Richard always choking? <laughs> and Why have you always lost your, your um, slacks? Fucking hell, I've just gone back to the 70s. I know. Slack, slacks. I was trying to think of a different word for trousers, but that one's the first one that came into my head, and I like it. 2023, they're called skirts. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, why have you taken your skirt off, Mr. Ike? Why have, you, why have you taken your male skirt off? I don't know, I could have just lifted up. <laughs> I'm just an idiot like that. You now you're not thinking about us hugging. So, that, uh, again, I remember being at school and, and things like that started to creep in, like stupid rules. People getting detentions. I remember a couple of girls getting detentions because they were misbehaved outside of school. That's outrageous. I was like, what are you doing? Even at my that. age, I was about 12, 13. And I remember her name was Marie and she got detention because she misbehaved out of school. I think she was like messing around near a super drug or something. Um, but that, but... That is unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, this. Well, so what year would that have been? 1994? Why is the school getting involved? Because it was the same when I went to school. There, there was a similar... They were starting to bring in similar things then. I mean, I didn't really go to school, to be honest. But um, <laughs> I wasn't really there that much. Or if I was, I was napping. Yeah, yeah. I, I napped a lot of the way through high school, actually. And I remember in one maths class, um, I would nap at the front. I would just literally turn up and go... Oh, fuck you, no, I'll see you later, boys. <laughs> and I just now, and then the teacher at the end of the class would go, right, can everybody put Gareth, put their homework on my desk on the way out? Thank you. Just gave up. Just give up. Just gave up. Everybody gave but up. Gareth. Yeah, and I remember we, we had a science teacher as well called Miss Stokes. Oh, great, Jackie, ain't done all work. Right, that's how she spoke. And um, she, I would walk in and she'd go, are you going you gonna to mess around in today's class? And i go, wow, there is a potential of that, Miss Stokes. <laughs> right? Get out. She just kicked me out before it even started. Yeah, yeah. Get out. And then, like, the deputy head would be walking through the corridor and I'd just be sat there on a chair. I've been kicked out again, Gareth. I didn't do anything. Yeah. But, yeah, I have, quite clearly. I'm in the corridor. Yeah. What was it? I was trying to tell Sam, you said something to one of your teachers and they rang your dad and then he told your dad in one of the parents' meetings your dad was laughing. What was that? So I wasn't listening, right? You might be surprised. But the reason I wasn't listening, in my defence, was actually I was actually trying to... Right, what I used to do, because I fucking hated homework, because I just used to want to go and play football, if I'm honest. So they dish out the homework, sometimes at the start of the lesson or in the middle of the lesson. So I'd spend the rest of the lesson doing the fucking homework as quick as I could. Right. Like, get, it, get it done, and then just put it in my bag and pretend I did it that night. And so I wasn't listening, but Miss Castle, her name, was a horrible woman. 
she'd, she'd asked the class, unbeknownst to me, what a chameleon was. This was middle school, what a chameleon was. And a couple of people had half answered it, like they got a bit yeah. like whatever. I hadn't heard any of this. Well, I was at the back, right? Because Miss Castle was a div, she took the kid that fucked around and put him at the back of the class. What well up, mate? Yeah. So I'm there, you know, scribbling away. She goes, Gareth! Yeah? What's a chameleon? Well, I couldn't hear her that well. I went, someone that cracks jokes makes people laugh. I went, <laughs> right? Because I've misheard her. <clears throat> so at the parents' evening, right, she's called mum and dad in, right, <clears throat> going to read the riot act about the disastrous son. Yeah. And so they told, she told dad that story, and obviously dad laughed, because it's funny, <laughs> isn't it? And she respond, her response was, I don't think it's funny, Mr. Wright. I do. I do, and my son does, and it is. It's really it is. funny, yeah. It's funny, it's funny. Someone's misheard you. If that was me and I was the teacher, I would start laughing, because it's funny, isn't it? It'd be it's even harmless. funnier if her name was Miss Herder. No, Miss Castle. Uh, all right. Um, what else is going on in the world? Climate change is still about, so they've got us all going. The Rona's coming back, climate change is still here, fake alien invasion on the rise, and um, transgender everything, and anti-Semitic everything. And so Zelensky. This, and Zelensky. Vice, then that well-known publication Ooh, for, for... Trustworthy. For, yes, tr not only is it trustworthy, it's award-winning journalism from these lot um, in their kind of, yeah, in their, their wokeness. This is, so this is what they put out. This terrifying phenomena is becoming increasingly common because of climate change. Guess what it is? Um, heart attacks. Not far off. Scientists studying temperature at which humans spontaneously die with increasing urgency. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. We'll add that to the list of, um, of reasons for death. Just don't let it go over. Have you got the heating on? Are you trying to kill me? Hello? Babe? Oh, she's dead. She's dead. dead. Oh, are you fucked with the thermostat? Your mum's gone. Your yeah. fault. We have to get another one. Put it with the elders. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's just like scientists studying temperature. Scientists studying temperature. What do you mean by studying temperature? It's hot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's really cl cl climate change colder, is, the, is, the biggest, um, is the biggest mass cull since the Holocaust. Oh, fuck. You can't say that. Hottercost. Oh, it's just Honolulu. <laughs> <laughs> so they sponsor, it increases your chance of spontaneously dying. I love that. That's almost like you just got up in smoke. Love the idea of it just being spontaneous. But yeah, I, don't, I, I don't like rules. I don't like... <laughs> <laughs> I love put a picture of a sweaty eye on it, which is funny. So increasing... Uh, yeah, so that's basically climate change. They're trying to tie it to the fact that, that a lot of people are spontaneously dying or sudden death. And we all know, we know why people are suddenly dying. Because of anti-Semitism. <laughs> Absolutely. I saw uh, Putin anti-Semitism. I saw a, um, a story a couple of days ago, actually. It was sent to me, and it was it was there's a new there's another new thing that happens that you oh, what the fuck is it called? I can't remember what it's called. It's a four letter acronym. But basically, if you go wild swimming, like lock swimming or river swimming or, or, or sea swimming in the winter, or whatever, this can suddenly happen to you. Basically, where your lungs just fill with fluids and you just fucking. Well, it's called drowning. Um, it, it's similar to drowning, <clears throat> but it does it from within, right? Apparently. So I got sent this article and I wondered, I'll be honest with you, mate, why I was being sent the article. Because I was thinking, I was just, oh, this is just another reason for people to suddenly die, is it? And I, I was reading it and then there was this, this case of this woman that went wild um, swimming and then had to be dragged out of the water because she started to fit and her lungs just started to fill with fluid and she couldn't breathe. Um, and then it said um, she, um, two hours before the swim, she had had her COVID booster, but doctors have said that this is unrelated. Okay. Oh, Why mate. would they even mention it in the article? Yeah. Because like, yeah. you probably had like a, like a Twix on the way there as well. Why not mention that? Why not mention the drive through McDonald's? Exactly. Yeah. She shat herself on the way to the bay, had to stop off halfway, change it, throw her knickers in the woods. Then she had a Twix, not having any knickers on, thought, I'll go for, a, go for a quick dunk in the river, wash myself, had a heart attack. But also she had a, a vaccine. Why would you even mention it? Is, uh, but then for doctors to go, it's not connected. No, 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 anti-Semite, no. <laughs> we weren't even, we didn't even mention, you brought it up. There's a new phenomenon where um, 
people um, get a really, really sore arsehole all of a sudden, right? There was this one woman who went on a bike ride, got a really sore arsehole. Um, what was interesting is a couple of hours before, someone had actually stolen the saddle. Um, but doctors have said that the two things are not connected. Although they looked connected in the it CCTV, connected. CCTV, it looks, <laughs> CCTV it camera. Connected. It looked very connected. She looked like a lollipop. <laughs> she really did, because she was round and rotund and not allowed on horses. Rotund's a good word. It's a great word, isn't it? Harry made me laugh recently. He's getting a bash in. And I'd like to get your kind of take on what's going on here, because we're not Harry fans, we're not Royal fans, obviously. But he's obviously taking a bashing in the mainstream media. But this one made me laugh. Here's the sole customer who was queuing outside Waterstones Piccadilly this morning for the. So they've basically the mainstream media have set up outside Waterstones in Piccadilly, which is the biggest Waterstones, obviously probably in the world, but definitely in the country. Um, so they've set up a photo opportunity. So they're all that turned up was one customer dressed in purple to match the actual background of it. Um, and um, she was the only customer, and there was about 30 members of the press. They've set up a press, like a, a photo opportunity for one customer to turn up and make out a story that only one person turned up. This is the state of the mainstream media. This is Ellie Costello from her own, from some sort of TV programme. And I wonder what, like, I, I wonder what your take is on why they're doing this. Is it just distraction? But also that is so... Typical mainstream media setting up something like oh, that. Oh, totally. They probably did that about five in the morning. Oh, of course they did. Yeah, but it's so pathetic. I I don't understand why the former uh, prince um, of U UK has written a book about ten pin bowling. I don't understand <laughs> how qualified well, he is. I just thought it was about if what happens in case you shit yourself. Yeah, make sure you got one mm. in your bag. Um, this will be fun. I nearly bought it on that. Um, I, I don't give a fuck, to be honest. I, I don't care about him. I don't care about his wife. I don't care about his family. Um, they're all parasites to me. Um, so it's, you know, it's Hillary v. Trump, really, for me. I can not give yeah. a fuck about either of them. Um, I don't care. A lot of it's distraction. Of course it is. Um, <clears throat> one thing I did see, which I found amusing, was the fact that um, Camilla had um, converted his room into a dressing room. Right. And he was he'd written about that. It's like, right, wait a minute. You've left home in your 30s, which is already fucking embarrassing. Right. Yeah. Your dad has given you what an eight million pound mansion for you and your wife and kid that you later complain isn't big enough. But you've been given this eight million pound house. Right. With taxpayers money. So you've left the house, the family home in your 30s for your eight million pound mansion. It's hard life in it. Yeah. Um, and now you're pissed off because your your um, stepmom has changed, you turned your bedroom. Were you planning on going back, were you? Well, Harry? this is what I'm saying. But they're in, it's not like mine and your house. I mean, my house is two up, two down. It's not as if, like, they live in a fucking mansions, estates. But like, it's a lack of self-awareness. Well, I don't understand, like, what do you mean you've that... turned your bedroom? You've got 60 rooms you've never seen. It's... You've never been in them. Well, exactly. And But to say that as if... Anyone in the general public, apart from the weird, sycophantic mental heads, is going to give a shit. It's like it's, it's like coming in and going, fucking, won a million quid yesterday, didn't I? I fucking turned up in 50s. <laughs> a, lot of places, a lot of places won't take 50. No, no. one's sympathising, mate. Yeah. No one's worried for you. No it's totally worried. insane. No, I, I, I agree. The, the thing that, that like got me the most about all this is that, oh, he's revealed this and revealed that. The things he hasn't spoken about, like he didn't even touch on <laughs> Jimmy Savile. He didn't even talk about um, Jimmy Savile and his dad, Epstein and his uncle. He doesn't talk about his mum being well, killed he, in a tunnel. He spoke about Epstein and his uncle. Oh, did um, he? In the book? Yeah, apparently so. But what made me laugh was the fact that, OK, now do your dad. Yeah. Now talk about your dad. Yeah. Um, you know, but they don't, obviously. Of course but, they don't. So he also, could've... they did touch on the Diana one slightly um where he was saying that he believed she'd actually faked her own death for a while right um and then her him and his brother both said um that they agreed that the inquiry into her death had been well carried out when actually neither of them did yeah well of course it hasn't so i think don't he's, say it then. he's hinting at stuff but he hasn't said a thing which he yeah, never he's, would he's, do he's hinting at stuff yeah. yeah he's hinting at stuff but people coming out going oh he's thrown them under the bus his mum really was wanted to he could, yeah exactly his mum was loose murdered if you really wanted to do that you could come out with all of it so it was all, it's all a bit of a distraction i think it's another divide and conquer who who do you support type thing and they're trying to set up this rivalry where you split the nation again 
Well, um, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, just it's, it's just it's more distraction. It's more uh, bullshit for people to talk about, <laughs> like me and you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the state of GB News as well, just for the fact that they're just ramming on and on about it. That that shows clearly what these these ten, uh, apparently alternative media things are set up for. I'm just reflecting. Oh, just I can't stand him. Can you feel me reflecting? I think I can't stand him as much as you can't stand Zelensky, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of him. He does me head in a bit. Um, in, in talking of um, bullshit um, and the press and more bullshit, the NHS, do you see that flu story? Nope. So um, a woman um, is in a hospital because she didn't get the flu jab, did she, Rich? Ah. She's like Cher. She's like Cher all over again. Yep. I didn't get the flu jab because I thought my immune system was strong enough. I thought I could fight it on my own. And here I am in a hospital bed feeling like a fool. Next year, I will be the first in line to get my flu jab, right? So a couple of people went, I recognise her. <laughs> let's, let, let's go and have a look who she is. So she's, um, she works for the NHS um, and she's often used in PR campaigns for the NHS. Right. What, the, what are the odds? I mean, what are the odds? About much as the odds of the first person to get the vaccine was called Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> dead, dead, dead now. Oh, it's just a little carnival of shit, isn't it? It is a carnival of shit. Yes, um, it is. Talking of shit, um, Justin Trudeau, um, this is a crazy one. So Canada, you know, they obviously brought in the law where euthanasia is just, I'm in a bad mood, kill him. Um, so if you're depressed, you can be put down now like a fucking dog. <laughs> Um, and so the stories come out of a guy who had a benign brain tumour, right? So this is benign, right? Mm. And he was offered death twice on the phone by a receptionist. <laughs> by the receptionist? By the receptionist. Um, I've, I've phoned up for an appointment. I've got a benign brain tumour. It's causing me headaches and stuff. It's a bit grim. Um, I don't know if I can get some painkillers or whatever. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah, I mean, we've yeah. got painkillers, but they are expensive. Have you thought about death? <laughs> What do you well, mean? Well, I, you'd, I be, no. you'd be doing us a favour because we are rushed off our feet here. I mean, we've got the, the queuing up out there. Just pretend, make some noise. They're queuing up out the door here. So if you think about, give it ten minutes, think about death, and then, then uh, then ring yeah. us back. Are you sure it's benign? Well, yeah. I mean, your your um, you your hospital has told me it's benign. Yeah, well, and I've just looked. I've just asked um, um, our scientist, and they've the def they've changed the definition of benign to not benign. Now the opposite. Um, um, so okay. that probably means that you are dying, and it's going to be really painful. So, I mean, what sort of cutlery have you got around the house? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we don't have any appointments, as you as you can hear. It's really really loud. <laughs> Uh, here with so many people so i can give you a code that you can quote on the phone um to to get an appointment at a um at a, a neighboring hospital you got a pen uh, yeah yeah i've got a pen okay just take down this code k i yep l l yeah y o u r yeah you getting this yeah um s e l f okay there you go yes See you later. Thanks for calling. Um, can you just fill out that little list? Uh, when I put the phone down, there'll be a little um, a little feedback um, a message. If you could just leave your feedback on that, it'd be great. Thank you. Kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Kill yourself, kill yourself. <laughs> Love? What do you mean? You keep doing that, I'll turn the heating up. What, what, imagine that, though. So the receptionist wants another job. What did you do at your old job? <laughs> I told people to kill themselves, didn't I? <laughs> When can you start? Yeah, exactly, yeah. When can you start? It's unbelievable, though, isn't it? Yeah. Unbe unbelievable. Have you thought about suicide? <laughs> I love that this thing was just the receptionist. I just think it's hilarious. It's, it makes me, it makes me I'm not even going to put you through. I'll handle this one, you guys. Doctors, yeah, yeah, yeah. you stay out. I can see you busy. I'll okay. handle this one. I've got this. Right. Have you thought about killing yourself? See, I'm doing the good. I could do your job. It makes me think. And even um, need a vaccine of Alan Partridge. You know, Alan Partridge is having a conversation with Michael, and he says to Michael, "He says, have you ever thought about suicide?" And uh, Michael goes, "Aye, yeah." No, no. Have you ever thought suicide might be the answer? And Michael goes, "Aye, yeah." And he's really God, when? He's well, when I see you looking all depressed and stuff. No, not me. <laughs> Do you <remember> that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. All right, guys. So thank you for listening. You've got a little outro we need to do. Go.
Can I do one more? Go on then. I'm happy to do as many as you like, right, mate. So there's there's the largest satanic conference in the world. In oh, amazing! Boston. Have we got right. tickets? Why have no, we not been? Why are no, we not out, doing what F there? Why have we not been invited? Sold out. But um, they put out the requirements to um, to attend the biggest satan satanic conference in the world. <laughs> Fucking mad. Um, masks mandated. It's just I don't know why it made me laugh. Like Satan is like put a mask on, mate. You don't want to hurt anyone. Yeah, <laughs> in it. Yeah. Surely Satan would be like, just fucking cough over everyone. Yeah, cough, pick some sperm in there. Just get it no. everywhere, blood. Yeah, no, apparently just, yeah, you don't want to spread COVID, but it's all right to sacrifice a child in the woods. You yeah, know, you a massive 40-foot 40, 40 owl. Just make sure you've got a mask on when you're doing it. <laughs> You'll notice that everybody here at Bohemian Grove is wearing a mask. Yeah, you notice that every dead child tested negative, so... Yeah. yeah. Oh, Before mate. and after death, ask Jimmy. Uncle yeah. Jimmy's doing the testing. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. What yeah. sort of world do we live in? Yeah, I yeah. hope someone finds the Watafs in 200 years' time, buried somewhere in in, a, in the woods, and goes, there were what, some normal people left in the world. What a world. What, what a world. What a world. But these mm. guys thought it was funny. They laughed, yeah. they laughed it off. It is mad, isn't it? But yeah. anyway, yeah, so actually, yeah, so plug, should we plug, so 28th of January... Um, if you go to our Twitters, um, we'll be plugging it. We're, we're, we're doing a What Aff Live um, on Saturday, the 28th of January in um, Leicestershire. It's at a hotel, I believe, conference centre. And so all the be... details are there, aren't they? What's the, the website? It's comedylive.org, is that right? God, no, you got me. We should have this, done this before. This is the sort of shit you should prep, isn't it? Yeah, at least put the the website address in look there's both of us going for it now comedy podcast live dot live comedy podcast live yes no, dot live yeah so comedy podcast dot live yeah. um the page isn't loading for me now but you i noticed how the... you're on the picture here but i'm not no you are on one later on though what do you mean am i As, yeah there's one of you um but Just... there's not so on that one i'm on that i don't know why um it's got your name underneath but then on another poster you're on it it, oh, it has my name underneath, yeah. Of course it does. Yeah, it does have your name, yeah. So, um, yeah, tickets are available at comedypodcastlive.com. Katie Hopkins will be there, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, Phil Zimmerman, Andrew Lawrence, Alastair Williams, Abby Roberts, Right Said Fred are performing, and so is Matt Hoy um, of UB40 fame. Um, me and you are there, David Vance, James Melville, Gary McKinnon, uh, Peter McElvenner, um, and Vash Pernikar. Um, and it's all hosted by Dick Delenpole at the Kegworth Hotel and Conference Centre, which is in North Leicestershire. I okay. should be really looking forward to that as well. We think yeah, we're on Saturday night, laugh. but, but we're um, on Saturday evening, yeah. I want to meet. I can't wait to meet Gary McKinnon and ask him about hacking into NASA. That is going to be fascinates me. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. I, will, well, I can't do it because obviously I find it hard to Google comedy podcast dot live, which is the website. Yeah, so you're going to struggle to hack into NASA. Yeah, but there you go. Anyway, that's all for this week. Um, thanks for having us. Cheers, Rich. You've been bloody wonderful. Um, this week's podcast was brought to you by Supreme CBD. Head to supremecbd.uk. Use the code WATAF, W-T-A-F, and you get 40% off all products. It's good, isn't it? It's wonderful. CBD is good for you, and it will make you feel a lot better, and at least keep me awake, which would be lovely. It sorted me out, mate, when I had my nerve damage. Fuck. Yeah. Anyway. See you later. Bye.